right? They got free Wi-Fi at McDonald's. They've got Wi-Fi at Starbucks and pretty much everywhere you go. So bear in mind, again, there are lots of places where we can go and get uh, public Wi-Fi for uh, short-term use of the internet. You're going to want to use a live CD. This will be important to, again, prevent yourself from storing information or uh, gathering and, and, and uh, creating information about what you're doing and where you're doing it. And when possible, you're going to want to use uh, uh, anonymity mechanisms like Tor and or anonymizing proxies. Not just web proxies, but really any proxies you can find that will help to mask or obscure your tracks and or your destinations. You want to enable safe browsing, and although this may be unnecessary if you are in fact using Tor and anonymizing proxies, we're going to kind of go for an anonymity in depth here, right? The more layers that we can provide of anonymity, the better off we are, and the more we avoid any one piece of information being used to identify who we are and what we've done. And furthermore, we also want to recommend mechanisms for anonymous searching. Uh, on Worldwide Privacy Day, which was the 28th of January, wasn't really highly publicized, at least not here in the U.S., a uh, new search service called startpage.com was introduced. Uh, theoretically, they store no information about uh, any searches that are conducted, including IP addresses of those conducting the searches. You'll also uh, note that Moxie recent re recently released uh, a mechanism called Google Sharing, which basically serves as a series of uh, public proxies through which your Google searches can be conducted in order to, again, avoid Google tracking the information about the searches that you actually perform. Or the NSA. Or the NSA. Of course, yes. the funny thing here is uh, uh, we didn't provide a lot of detail about StartPage and Google Sharing simply because we've got a lot of information to cover. So if you want more information, Google it. Uh, lastly, of course, there's, uh, there are plugins that also help with anonymity, like uh, Customize Google. This is actually just a Firefox extension, but it will do things like anonymize UUIDs and prevent storage of cookies. It will enable uh, SSL for all Google services that you are interacting with. Okay, so now we step it up to the dagger level. <clears throat> First, again, it's becoming anonymous, but at the dagger level, things get a little more intense. You definitely need to change your name, and you definitely need to use the same guidelines we outlined at the cloak level, picking a smart name that you can be more creative with. This is going to become essential at this level to have a name that you can use differently. A new driver's license and social security number, if you can obtain them illegally, that's excellent and the best way to go, um, but you need to make sure that you're following the, the legal lines here. Uh, and if you're going to get a new driver's license, go ahead and get it in a different state, right? Uh, you're going to want to form several LLCs, and you're going to want to have them on hand, available. Form them in advance. Don't form them the minute you need them. You can use them to own property. You can use them to lightly conduct some business that we're going to get to in a minute. You need to be aware that obviously they're not impenetrable, but one of the advantages an LLC provides is if you incorporate them in the right states, which from our understanding is perhaps Wyoming and New Mexico, then you can not only incorporate them without the LLC portion on the end or the corp or ink portion on the end of it so that it appears like a real name owning something, but also you don't need to list the owners of the LLC on paper. You only need to list a registrar who receives mail for your corporation. Now let me quickly add actually, if you have an existing C Corp or S Corp, you can accomplish something similar, uh, at least in many localities through the use of what we refer to as trade names. A trade name is much like a DBA without the, the more stringent uh, requirements. They're relatively easy and inexpensive to obtain. And again, a trade name has no requirement for an ink or a corp or LLC at the end. So your trade name could be John Doe. Right. And while you can do your own research and see, you want to make sure that if you're going to establish a corp versus an LLC that you're able to do it without having to list the owners of the corporation because then you're exposing yourself. Yes. So you're creating the same link back. To repeat what he said, he said in most states, again, you will have to potentially publish in a, a, a local or community paper when you establish a trade name. This is also often true when incorporating. Um, yes. Interestingly, so in Georgia, for instance, the, there is a requirement for publishing in the local paper when you incorporate, but not when you establish the trade name. So you will have that initial track having incorporated or created the LLC. However, uh, once you have uh, gone and then established the trade name, there is no secondary requirement for posting uh, when you uh, do the trade name. But again, it's a very important point, and you'll want to look into that before you uh, walk down to the, uh, the local uh, county office and, and go trying to create your trade name. 
And this is the first time where we open up an, uh, an advantage we found with actually going towards the dagger level, which is that by opening up the opportunity for creating corporations and using your alternative identifications, you can actually conduct more business and have more options, such as potentially owning some property through your corporations and LLCs not tied to you. This is something that we don't feel is workable at the cloak level because of the amount of effort involved. Uh, again, the same basic rules apply with email, except Dodget and Gorilla Mail is pretty much your only option for true personal communication, while Gmail and Yahoo is acceptable for your corporations on the short-term basis. For the shelter level, we accept, uh, we're looking at a more mobile lifestyle than at the cloak level. Um, <laughs> A houseboat or a weekly rental is one way to go, but really trying to be as, as mobile as possible is the best way because the more you move, the harder you are to track. Couch surfing and hostels, anything where you can pay cash or, or, or not need to pay at all. Um, shelters or even the more extreme public parks and squatting are, are other potential possibilities here. All right, now social interaction at the dagger, dagger level is going to require a little bit of additional effort in order to ensure that you are not recognizable. So we talk about using disguises in public, and you can go extreme like Mr. Centaur. <laughs> or you might just consider like changes to your hairstyle or wearing glasses out in public. I'd actually hoped that I could read my slides like this, but that's not <laughs> going to happen. Right, so uh, again, uh, we also want to do things like avoid long-term communities. Now, this could be really any community, and we also want to point out that this would include, for instance, religious groups. Anywhere where you're going to hang out for any long term is going to create or establish a profile. So that means you're going to want to avoid interactions in any communities that, again, where people are going to begin to recognize and or identify you. We talk about using a proxy, and uh, we had originally just referenced virtual assistants. However, we point out proxy because this is a step beyond. Much like a virtual assistant, this is somebody that can do things on your behalf. But more importantly, they can do things on your behalf, and in some cases, in their own name. Right? And that's kind of the key here. You think about a proxy, there's never really any direct connection between point A and point C, only A to B and B to C. So it does uh, remove you one level from any and all transactions. We want to avoid people in all social networking when possible. And of course, it's, it's pretty uh, explicit here that we need to avoid all publicity. Any publicity is going to defeat or mitigate the mechanisms that we're implementing in order to try to become and remain anonymous. And it's important to note the distinction there between using a proxy, which implies someone you can trust, and trying to avoid people. You're going to have to walk that line again and make sure that this is someone you can trust if they're going to open a bank account in their name or purchase property for you in their name and make sure you feel like you can actually trust them in some way. Sure. Uh, making money online, again, uh, we've got some restrictions here, but as Adam pointed out a little bit earlier, because we will potentially have a corporation or an entity through which we can now conduct business, in addition to basic jobs that pay cash, we're now also afforded the ability to do things with our business that would be considered short-term or business-to-business -business transactions or short-term business-to-consumer transactions with relatively low expectations. And what we mean by that are short-term services, watch repair, leather repair, car stereo installation, things where you're not going to expect somebody to have to turn around and call you back a week later uh, based on having patched a hole in the leather in their automobile. Um, we talk here about confidence schemes, and what we're really talking here are things like white van schemes, Brian, um, three-card Monty Popham. There's a lot of things that we can do here, but we're not really talking about breaking the law again. We're talking about doing things that are, again, uh, potentially uh, short-term manipulation of people in order to produce cash on uh, individual transaction basis. <laughs> That's you. Ah, yes, okay, so uh, using money at the dagger level, uh, again, we also go now into uh, some of the things we can do in order to keep, maintain, and or transact with our money. So we now introduce concept here of PayPal corporate, right? We can use PayPal through our organization. Um, also bear in mind, I was having a conversation with a, a couple of folks from Georgia who I don't see in the room yell at them later, but they were pointing out that again, uh, with a PayPal account, although theoretically you can't put money, you can't deposit money into an unverified PayPal account, you can essentially transfer money from other PayPal accounts into an unverified PayPal account, mitigating or eliminating the requirement for a bank account. So we really don't get into PayPal at the cloak level, again, because of the difficulty and or the potential for requirements. However, at the dagger level, this is a bit more appropriate. Again, money orders, cashier's checks now potentially because, again, we may have a bank account. Uh, we introduced the possibility of offshore accounts, noting that, again, much like IRC, offshore accounts are something that are generally going to garner attention. 
right? If you've got offshore accounts, somebody's going to begin to wonder why. And if somebody's looking for you, the fact that you've got an offshore account or the fact that there is an offshore account potentially associated with your name could be a bit of a red flag. Uh, there is also the concept of a hawala. Uh, a hawala is essentially a private network that trades in debt. And what that means is essentially party A pays